we're going to play a little game. You are the amp. You're going to be using your eyes because you're looking at the master index. I'm going to call out a table name. You've got one second to tell me which cylinder it resides in. Are you ready? Employee table. Customer table. Addresses table. Get ready. It's tricky. Order table. Very nice. We've got our employee table in cylinder one. We've got our customer table in cylinder two. Our addresses table, that's in cylinder five with other tables. And our order table, come on, did you nail this? Three and four. That's how the master index is used by the amp to find things, hey, in under a second. This is the piece now that we've been missing that's going to really make even more sense than before. We know we've got thousands of cylinders on each disc and an amp's going to be able to track those with its master index. Each amp's master index is unique to that amp. A different amp will have the same tables, different rows, who knows where it's going to put it. Not definitely in the same places, but this amp knows that it's got these cylinders or this cylinder and it's got the data blocks inside this cylinder. So I want you to see something very clearly. Every amp has one and only one master index unique to what it's been doing. And for every cylinder, it's got a series of cylinder indexes. If it's got 50,000 cylinders, it's got one master index, and it's got 50,000 different cylinder indexes. You see, the master index says that table is in this cylinder or this set of cylinders. But we know that data comes in sectors or blocks, and that's the way it should be described. Oh, I've got four tables in this cylinder. There's the first set of data blocks, second, third, and fourth. That cylinder index actually tells the amp which set of sectors to pull into memory that represent that particular table. So you always have one master index and one cylinder index per cylinder. The one master index on each amp is always in memory. But there's just so many cylinder indexes, they may or may not be in memory. They try to get as many of them in there as they can, but they can't always get them all. So sometimes they may still have to bring that into memory. Now, this amp's been asked, I want you to bring in the addresses table. It looks in the master index and says, I need cylinder five. It goes to the cylinder index and then says, ooh, just give me sectors 15 and 16, and that data block is red. If you want to order a pizza, there's two things you're going to need to do maybe. Look in the phone book and get that number. When an amp reads data, there's two things it's going to look up. The master index and the cylinder index. I'm going to go psycho-abstract on you. I'm going to ask a very difficult question. How many row reference arrays would you see in this diagram for the employee table? We can see from the master index that in cylinder number one, we've got our employee table. There's only one block in that table. It has not split yet. One block, so there would only be one row reference array in that picture. Stay with me. How many row reference arrays do you see in the order table? The order table has split and we've got four blocks in total. There are four row reference arrays, one per block. Toughest question yet, how many row reference arrays do you see 
in this entire picture. There are 10 row reference arrays in this picture. One per block. Another very difficult question. How many cylinder indexes do you see in this picture? There are nine cylinders in the picture. That means there will be nine cylinder indexes.